Karnataka, a land of diverse landscapes and natural resources. A vast state with fertile lands that grow everything from pulses and spices to grains and coffee. You will also find some of the fastest growing cities in India standing side by side with lush green spaces. And spread across its terrain are these remarkable water bodies that brim with life. Join us on a journey through the wetlands of Karnataka to understand what makes them so special and how they support birds from near and far. It's winter in Karnataka. The weather is pleasant and a sleepy lull envelops the state. Wetlands across the land have been replenished by monsoon rains after a dry summer. Look above you. Hundreds of migratory birds travel in V formations, heading to their winter homes in search of two fundamental needs, food and warmth. To get here, they use well-set travel paths. These are called flyways. There are nine flyways across the world that birds use to travel over countries, oceans and continents. India falls within the Central Asian Flyway, a route that extends from the northernmost breeding grounds of Siberia to the wintering grounds of West and South Asia. Take the Blythe's Reed Wobbler, one of the most common visitors to India. While these wobblers breed in the coldest parts of Asia and Europe through summer, these red dots show that almost the entire global population of the species migrates to the Indian subcontinent during winter. A large number of the migratory water birds visit wetlands here, seeking food, safety and ideal feeding conditions. Karnataka, with its varied wetland habitats, is just what these migratory birds are looking for. Along its 320-kilometer coastline, one can observe estuaries where the rivers of Karnataka meet the sea. The wetlands here hold salt water from the sea and fresh water from the rivers. There is plenty for birds to eat, making this the perfect habitat for migratory birds who have a taste for salt water and fresh seafood.
And then there are the inland wetlands. For centuries, the people of Karnataka have been damming its natural streams, rivers and low-lying areas. Today, the seven river basins of the state feed 13 major reservoirs. Karnataka also has the largest number of man-made tanks that are used for irrigation and domestic purposes. These tanks can be visualized as shallow basins with concentric zones of varying water depths. Each of these zones is used by different groups of birds. The deep waters are usually used by birds like ducks, geese and cormorants, while the shallow waters are used by a whole range of birds like herons, egrets, storks and other waders. What part of these wetlands the birds settle in depends on the length of their legs, the shape and size of their beaks, how big or small they are and what they feed on. The waders prefer to probe around the shallow waters. They masterfully navigate the soggy land looking for a meal. These greater flamingos are stomping around to stir up the bottom and filter feed on small juicy shrimps, algae, mollusks, tiny insect larvae and other microscopic organisms that thrive in these waters. As the gradient increases, so does the depth. The red-crested poacher will dive and disappear underwater, looking for food. But dabblers are far more delicate in their search. Here are northern pintails, sticking their tails up, tipping their heads underwater to nibble on their meal. These birds have become an intrinsic part of Karnataka's wetlands. This is Magri, a village in North Karnataka. The small tank here is important to the lives of the villagers and the birds. Every winter, thousands of bar-headed geese visit this quaint village. In some years, there are more than 7,000 that congregate at this lake. They are one of the highest flying birds, traveling over the tallest peaks of the Himalayas to come to their wintering grounds. What brings them to Magadi are the large fields of crops. At the crack of dawn, the geese arrive at the fields to feast on groundnut, tender shoots of wheatgrass and Bengal gram. They time their visits to these fields such that there are no farmers around. Today though, they have an unusual companion. A lone black buck tries to make his way into the gaggle of geese hoping for some feeding space. The geese, outnumbering him, are not very interested in the black buck's cause. He thinks of a game to make them change their mind. The geese accommodate the game, but refuse to budge. Defeated, the black buck moves on. The geese have clearly won this round. 
It's time to go back now. Approaching the tank, they tumble down like snowflakes. As they land, they quench their thirst immediately. At Magadi, these birds are quite confiding as they don't feel threatened. Around them are men and women going about their business. No bird seems particularly ruffled by human presence. Their ability to coexist has helped sustain the birds' migration. Among the geese is Y03. He was marked with a green collar in central Mongolia. This lightweight collar helps track his journey from Mongolia over the Himalayas before he reaches Magadi Lake. There are several others like him who have been collared and have visited Magadi more than once, indicating their site fidelity, a preference to visit the same area over and over again, across seasons and years. Bird watchers and the forest department in Karnataka have been sharing details on the sightings of these collared, bar-headed geese with the Wildlife Science and Conservation Center of Mongolia for over a decade. Tagging systems also continue to give never-before-seen insights into the movements of these migratory birds. Along the banks of the reservoirs, farmers make good use of the available moisture. The waders find a great source of food in these cultivated lands. Among this carpet of small Pratt & Coles is one special visitor, the Oriental Pratt & Coal. A recent satellite tracking project has revealed for the first time that this species flew from northwestern Australia, crossing Java and South China Sea, flying over Thailand and across the Bay of Bengal to land in Odisha, moving to breed here in Bagalkot in Karnataka, before returning to its home in Australia, covering a total round trip of over 14,000 kilometers. This is the first ever recorded instance of an oriental Pratt & Coal flying all the way to India to breed. Tags and satellite tracking methods help gather information that can be used to study migration, mortality, identification of key feeding grounds and how long the birds take to travel. These are the first steps towards the conservation of these birds and the wetlands that they choose to migrate to year after year. The need for conscious conservation also arises because there are several threats to the resident and visiting birds. Like the nests and eggs being trampled by livestock, hunting by feral dogs, untreated sewage and dumping of unsegregated garbage, harmful pesticides and chemicals from farms, industries polluting the wetlands, development of lakes into parks and encroachments that are taking away the last of the wetlands. Identifying these wetlands as important sites for migration, the Karnataka Forest Department and local authorities are stepping up to conserve them as avian hotspots and important bird areas. The Forest Department has also proposed that several of these wetlands be named as Ramsar sites, giving them international recognition. Asian Midwinter Waterfowl Census, Bird Atlas and Bird Surveys happen as a collaborative effort between the Forest Department, experts and bird-watching enthusiasts.